The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 20th of May, 2021. Art. Me. I really enjoyed this journey through the soul of Taurus, through the arts. I am. What did you feel? Me. Many things. But above all, the capacity we have to create is infinite. Sometimes, in our eagerness to seek spirituality, we forget that the spiritual has designed this world so that we can experience, feel everything that the mind is capable of imagining, and our capacity for manifestation makes that dream possible. You don't have to go far to discover the infinite power of creation, the manifesting divinity. It is enough just to enjoy or produce art. I am. What does art produce in you? Me. Since I was a child, I always loved drawing, learning about music, writing, sculpture and building. Except for dance. The rest of the arts always came naturally to me and made me who I am. My love for music has awakened, was awakened by my grandfather, who listened to classical music every day whilst I was with him. When he died, I inherited his records and I listened to them every day. In the garden, I used to build structures for my guinea pigs with bricks, sand and cement. I used to build tunnels and bridges and I even made an artificial pond for all the animals. I loved to tell stories to my friends in the neighborhood and I used to write long texts, prose, just telling stories about magic. I spent my days drawing, painting, as well as sculpting with plasticine and clay. From birth, I had a lot of technique in drawing as well as in molding. I remember once ruining a pot for my grandmother trying to make a plaster mold to carve something big. Since I was a child, artistic expression was every was very awake in me and it gave me great pleasure and joy to see the development of something that came out of me. When I grew up, I did it on a larger scale, making murals, writing books, wanting to learn piano. Although I never followed it, I didn't like how I was taught and I got traumatized as well as making plans of old cities and schools that I wanted to create. I remember that I had imitated the technique of a friend of my mother's who was an architect in order to make the plans for a school I intended to found as an adult where I could teach the things I knew. I think art in many ways defined the way I saw the world. I am. You saw the world was as moldable as plasticine, susceptible to music with a lot of space to rebuild the new to rewrite history. Me. That's right. Everything I saw in the world inspired me. I could see figures and potentials everywhere. I remember once writing that I felt I could even tell the story of a chair leg because any object I saw inspired me with an understanding that could change the world view. When I knew that I came to do my bit for the transformation of the earth, one of the things I always said is that artists have a fundamental role to play in achieving this. Musicians, architects, filmmakers have a greater influence on people's lives than a politician or an economist. And yet, the paradox is that people still live, live their lives in terms of politics and economics rather than art. How does something that moves so much of an individual's inner world become mere entertainment? Something that is not considered serious? I am. To answer this, you have to ask yourself an important question first. Me. Which one? I am. What is art? Me. Oh, right. What is art? I am. Art is existence. The word art comes from the Latin ars, whose Indo-European meaning is to place, to fit, to make with propriety. It is the idea of connecting things in an appreciable, fair order, putting together or weaving a fabric. In Indo-European, the concept of weaving, making something, is tek, originating from the Greek word tekne, the beauty of what is made, the way in which something is made. This term gave us words like technique, weaving, technology and text. Art is the making of something from one to the world, and technique is the way, the how you make it. From a universal view, you could understand that the mental universe is infinite, and because of this, 
it is a chaotic mind without order. For there to be order, you need polarity to order things according to waves and rhythms. These give rise to beauty, a word which from the Indo-European du means mighty worship of the maid, me. Something beautiful is therefore the manifestation of the power to make something, I am. That's right. It is the emergence of the will, which the universe calls energy, and which the, which the culture calls soul, me. Oh, the soul then is the ordering aspect of infinity, I am. Herein is born the beauty of the soul, which orders, adjusts, makes, in, makes manifests the infinite and the finite, so that the cosmos exists. Art is the expression of the soul, and therefore art is existence, for it is the realization of that which emerges and goes out of itself to manifest in space. When energy creates from itself the matter to order itself, it develops the beauty of the worlds, and nature finds its canons of beauty in the cosmos. The human interprets this order and sets out to imitate it, to use his intelligence as a way of taking from nature the tools to create beauty in the world. This is how he, he imitates colors, how he molds clay, how he sings and celebrates by dancing, how he builds in his environment, how he narrates his exploits. Me. And from this, the fine arts emerge, which in other words would be the quality of doing things with adoration from one's own power. I am. Throughout time, in the development of human history, art and technique were connected as one, being synonymous with each other. In the philosophical or hermetic schools, art, science, engineering, technique were taken holistically as they were all forms of realization, the way to shape ideas, to be ingenious in finding ways to weave a scientific data into an artistic development. All four were part of a process. Science posed a thesis, which engineering had to section in order to find the technique that could translate it into reality as art. Me. From that point of view, art is the realization of science. And science is the inspiration for art. I am. Exactly. For example, a building is the art of mathematical sciences and geometry. A song is the art born of the sciences of meter and sound. A painting or a meal is the art of the science of chemistry and physics. Me. I see. And why did you separate? I am. Conceptually, in Roman times, the terms ars and techne took different paths. Art came to describe attributes of aesthetic and emotional development, while technique came to describe the development of the practical and intellectual. Me. They separated into mind and heart. I am. And then along came Opus Dei. Me. The Catholic extremist organization? I am. No. The organization that emerged in Spain last century only took its name from a Latin phrase from the Christian era. Opus Dei means work of God. Christianity, as well as various monotheistic currents coming from the Middle East, interpret the world as part of hell, a divine punishment, and the pleasures of this world as something negative, the devil's deceptions. This view is contradictory to the philosophy that instilled a love of nature and the arts of the soul the pleasures of the body. In European Christianity, the connotation of life was to suffer, and therefore we had to work to, pro to prove ourselves worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Me. Oh, right. This made the arts to be seen as something diabolical. I am. And therefore, only sacred art, that which worshipped God, was allowed. Everything else was sin. Similarly, in the rise of Islam, the idea that God could not have a face led to a raid on artists who depicted people in paintings and statues, as well as gods and myths. Art was relegated to the religious sacred, and it is worth mentioning something fundamental. Art is emotion. An emotion makes us feel impure things from the religious point of view, 
which lead us to sin. Thus, it was necessary to eliminate all art from our lives, to live austere lives dedicated only to the work of God. Me. This took us away from the emotional culture. I am. And built a European society based on the culture of work and not of feeling. Me. Why are we talking about Europe? What about the rest of the world? I am. Each culture maintained its own art forms, but they were all subjected to the European vision at the time of colonial colonization. Today, the world, whether you like it or not, is bathed in a Europeanized layer, which means that beyond its own history, the ideological canons are decorated with the history of Europe. So, when we speak in general, we are referring to what has happened on this continent due to globalization since the 15th century. Me. Ah, oh, well, I am. This suppression of emotion generated a cultural tradition of hiding feelings, something that, in spite of the creative impulse of the Renaissance, had become deeply rooted in humanity. During the mid-15th, 16th, and 17th centuries, art flourished again, and emotional expression was once more embodied in the fine arts, but this time exalted in the aesthetic and emotional, becoming much more detached from the scientific. Although many of the Renaissance artists were the fathers of scientism and pillars of development because of their revolutionary ideas, science did not want to be confused with aesthetic artists because emotion is counterproductive. Me. In what sense? I am. In the 16th century, Descartes' scientific method made science exclusively based on objectivity, seeking to eliminate any hint of subjectivity that would modify the result of the experiment. Thus, artists were seen as mere entertainment to relax the mind as the playground of scientists and thinkers. The artistic revolutions of the 18th century created the bohemian perception of artists, which spread as a culture of eccentrics throughout this 19th century, in which artists were labelled as emotional, philosophical branch, unable to contribute to the logic of the real world. In the expansion of technology, science and engineering due to the Second Re Industrial Revolution, logic took over in the 20th century, and artists became mere interpreters. As Picasso said, Art is the lie that helps us to see the truth. Me. But still, art was and is fundamental in every person's life. We give a lot of importance to art, always, in every historical period, and especially in the 20th century, we have seen many ramifications of art that influenced our daily lives. I am. That's right. They have brought about revolutions, inspired thousands, and yet in the 21st century, they are still aspects of mere entertainment. Artists have been talking about peace for centuries, inspiring people to live in peace, and people resonate around the world with these messages, yet economics and politics end up doing the opposite. Me. Why? I am. Because logic takes precedence. The overwhelming logic that says... You have to survive. You can't live on nice thoughts. There are problems to solve. You don't get bread and security with songs. Me. Of course. I am. Politics and economics cling to these concepts to make deals and impose power. For the good of the people. And minds that fear death, that live to survive, are subjugated to this logic. So they listen to songs of peace and love at home. But when they go out... They don't know how to say no to war or how to avoid hating others. Me. Like those who listen to the song Let It Be or Imagine by the Beatles, but then go on to criticize or position themselves on one side of the pavement throwing stones at the other side. I am. Art became a form of entertainment or philosophy far from the practice of logic. This leads people to relate to all kinds of art as something conceptual or emotional, and not as something resolute or practical. Me. Well, it's worth mentioning that it's good to say, let's make a world without borders or colours. But that idea is magic, because there is really a lot of work behind it, because borders are not inventions to divide or control us, 
but they are a construction of security that we have been developing over thousands of years. In other words, I understand that the point that there should be no borders would be the best, but to relegate it to a mere desire without taking into account that there are many factors behind it also makes me see that art has separated itself from reality. I am. And that's what it had to come to. When we talk about art, everything seems inspiring, magical, and therein also lies the error of the artistic. Art is doing, ordering. Art had a practical role in culture, not an ideological one. Recent history has managed to take art to a celestial, ethereal position, far removed from the practical logic of the world. Me. So, art must come down to practice and science must open up more to the infinite possibilities that art offers. I am. And for that, each individual must become an artist of his own life. That is to say, a manifesto of his own reality, his actions, his truth. Me. Take action and get things done. I am. That's right. To bring beauty into the world is to do things for the world in the most orderly and inspiring way possible. Art is the innate capacity to generate, to create, to seek holistic solutions. Me. How do I do that? I am. Connect with what art inspires you, for art awakens the power and potential of your soul. The energy you have available to fulfill your mission and purpose lies in painting, music, poetry, literature, sculpture, dance, architecture and film. Connect with them. Awaken them in you. Fall in love with what your soul is capable of feeling, of doing, of expressing. Start at home. Awaken the arts in your home, in your soul, in your interior. Transform through them those little things that you have always hoped to transform, those that stagnate your emotion. Change things around, add colour, listen to new music, watch a different kind of film that inspires you, read a new book, paint a picture, even if it's just a colourful blob. Dance, set yourself free. Me. Awaken the soul of my home. I am. And... In doing so, you will discover the potential within, the strength to create and manifest. Then, little by little in your art, you will discover that you are capable of making changes in the world, of shaping through colour, sound, form, movement, image, and in that, awakening others to action. Me. To awaken the art in me, to find the technique that allows me to transform the world. I am. You are art. You must only recognize yourself as an artist. Me. I am the artist of my existence.